Rose and I, we like to sit on our front porch in, in, on Lishman Avenue. And we noticed um, there were these little squirrels. We have like some bird feeders, you know. So the squirrels want to come and help, help themselves to the bird food. So Rose says, maybe we should get some peanuts to feed the squirrels. So I said, that's a good idea. We'll feed the squirrels. So we got a bag of cheap peanuts from Big Lots somewhere. It's good enough for the squirrels. And uh, we, we would be sitting on the front porch, and a little squirrel would be out in the yard, and I'd throw a peanut out of it. And a squirrel would be, right, like, he'd jump right on it. And, uh, and he'd run away, and he'd come back. And we'd throw another peanut. And he started coming back and started looking at us. You know. They're pretty smart. They know where that comes from. Not like us. We don't know where our blessings come from God. They knew where their, he knew where his blessing was coming from. So he started getting closer and closer to the, to the till, he, till he jumped up on the porch, you know. And we thought, how cute. How cute. Yeah. A little squirrel. And uh, so we, you know, fed him a peanut and we went in the house. Well, I came out a little later. And I found out there was peanut shells all over her. Because we had some more peanuts. We had like a little bowl with peanuts in it. Well, he raided that. Okay. So I said, I said, well, you know, he's just hungry. So the next day, or day or so, so later we were out there and we were throwing peanuts to him. We went in the house and I came out. And we have these tomato plants on our front porch. You know those upside down tomato plants? So I walked out of my door and I said, look, there was a pile of peanut shells and one of my tomatoes right in the middle of them <laughs> with a big bite taken out of it. I'm thinking, that's all for that squirrel. He just... <laughs> now, that's just, this is a little story about squirrels. But I said that to say this. We think we can just kind of play around with Satan and we'll just like give him a little, you know, we'll give him a little peanut and say here, you know, we'll just, it's no big deal. How many people know he doesn't stop? You let him know that you're willing to invite him, and you can say, well, no, you can only, you can only go that far, but I guarantee you he's going he's gonna to take another step. And I'm saying all that to say this morning, our word this morning is from Psalm 119. And we're going to be beginning at, at, at verse 137. Psalm 119, most of you know, if you know your Bible, that's one of the, the longest chapters in all of the, uh, in all of the scriptures. And uh, it deals with the importance of God's word in dealing with our problems. The power of God's word, it protects us, it guides us, it directs us, it gives us peace in the middle of our chaos. And Psalm 119, if you read it, it's, it's a long psalm. Now I've read it many, many times, and, and you know, if you read your Bible through many, many times, just, you can read the same thing over and over again, and all of a sudden one time you just, you just see something and it's like... It's a, it's a psalm about peace that we find through faith in God's Word. That's what it's all, it's all, all, all deals with that. It, now, you know, the Lord, when, when God created man, He did such a, a marvelous job. He created our bodies to have a chemistry. And they know now that your brain works in ways. There are different, comp uh, different compounds, chemical compounds that our uh, glands produce that cause us to have different emotions and different feelings. And there are substances that our bodies produce that make us feel good. You ever heard the term endorphin? This is something that's it's almost like a natural kind of opium or uh, uh, Morphine. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a natural opiate. And it happens, you know, when you feel good, 
know, when something good is happening, when you're with the kids and when things are, you know, when, when you're having a good time, the endorphins are flowing. That's God programmed that in there. That's okay. Uh, there are other substances, you know, uh, serotonin, and, and I'm, not a, I'm not a medical guy, but I've just, I read about this, that God provided for us. Now, our thing is, our problem is that Satan has come along and has given us some different ways that we could kind of help that along. You know what I'm talking about. There are th substances you can take, things you can do. If you have, you know, anybody in here, it could be, you know, you know, smoking dope, or it could be drinking, or it could be shopping, or it could be eating, or it could be, you know, anything that, you know, when you, when you get stressed, what do you do when you get stressed out? Oh, <laughs> somebody says, mm. you know, go for about a quart of ice cream. I guess that's better than a crack pipe, but one way or the other, it's, it's you, you know, people do things when they get stressed. And when people that get into addictions, they're just people trying to deal with their pain. People trying to deal with their pain. Stuff happens in life, you know, situations occur and, and sometimes they're our, our, our fault and sometimes they're not. Yet, we get in, we, you know, we get this stuff happens to them and you know what it feels like when that, that big pit you get in your stomach when something is going, going wrong. When you get some bad news or you think you're up against something and... And what do you do? How do you deal with your stress? That's, that's the foundation of addiction. People trying to deal with stress, trying to deal with anger, trying to deal with uh, uh, doubt and fear and all these things. The scriptures deal with all that stuff. I'm here to tell you this morning, we need to get addicted to God's Word. We need to get addicted to whenever everything is falling apart, we need to come here to God's Word. Because it's His Word that will strengthen us and teach us and encourage us. In Psalm 119. If you know anything about this psalm, it's a very long psalm. It's called an acrostic psalm. The Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters. And each, uh, each set of verses, of like eight verses, uh, if you, in your Bible, it'll have like the Hebrew letter and then eight verses. It was an acrostic psalm. If we were to read this in the Hebrew, if we could read Hebrew, and I can't, the first line of every uh, verse, or the, the, the first letter of every verse under a particular heading would begin with that letter. So the very first eight verses, uh, it says uh, Aleph, and that's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Every word, uh, the first word of every part of that of every verse would begin with the Aleph because that's, that was A. It's just like A, B, C, D, you know. It's, it was called an acrostic. It was a memor memorization device. In verse, starting at verse 137, it's under the Hebrew word Tzadi, or the letter Tzadi. It's the 18th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the very word Tzadi, T-S, that sound, t, t, it's hard to say. I don't, think, I don't think there are many English words that have that kind of sound to them. But there, that's a Hebrew letter. And there are, in each one of these verses, there's at least one word that begins with the letter Saudi. Now we're going to read through the verses, you know, eventually. But here, here are the words. In verse 137, uh, there's a Hebrew word that means righteous. The word righteous begins with Saudi. Actually, the word is Sadek. Okay. Uh, in verse 138, the Hebrew word uh, is commanded. That begins with the Sadi. In 139, uh, the word consumed and the word enemies both begin with the letter Sadi. In the, uh, verse 140, the word pure begins with the word Sadi. In verse 141, the word small begins with that letter. In verse 142, the word righteousness begins with that letter. In verse 143, trouble. And again in verse 144, righteousness. So if we were to read this in the Hebrew, it would, each line would start with one of those words so you could remember what it says. Now, I want to read here a little bit. And I want you to get what the word is telling us and what the psalmist David is telling us about what we need to deal with our stress. And there's a lot of it today. There was a lot of it back then. They didn't have a $14 trillion dollar debt ceiling. They didn't have all this stuff that we're hearing every day. They didn't have all this stuff going on, but they had their own uh, set of things. King David would be running for his life sometimes. 
and he learned that whatever situation or a position he was in to count and turn to the Word of God even when he was caught in his sin he turned to the Word of God so let's read a little bit this morning and I'm not going to keep you a real long time it says in verse 137 Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. The psalmist here is telling us that Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord, is right in everything He does. Whether we understand it, whether we agree with it, whether we can comprehend it, He's right in everything He does. If you are a child of God, you might be going through some, some, some terrible circumstances. Somewhere God is going to make it right. Because he's right. He has a reason. There's a purpose for everything. We don't always understand it, and I don't always have the answer, but there is an answer, and the answer is that God is right. There's some people who reject that concept. Go through a hard time, they say, how can a right God let, be letting me go through this? But there's our sister Carol had testified, and many of us have testimonies of things and situations that we've been through. That if somebody would look at it from the outside, they would say, what a horrible situation. How could their God let that happen to it? Uh, let that happen to them. Yet we can look back upon what God has done and say, he was right. He was right. That's called a testimony. That's a testimony. He says, you're righteous and your judgments are upright. The things you do are upright. That term there really means, it's, they're like a, it's like a building term, it means straight. If you're going to build a house, everything has to be straight and level. If not, it'll be... I'm going uh, every, every morning, every Sunday morning, I drive past where I work, where I used to work, Allegheny Lutlam, and they're putting in a new, you know, strip mill. And they're building, and they're putting these metal... Uh, uh, last Sunday we drove past there. It was making the worst noise I ever heard in my life. <laughs> they had this machine. They were putting this metal uh, girder in the ground. And, uh, it was, uh, but it, it has to, if it's not straight, when they put the roof on, it's going to be... It has to be straight. God's judgments are righteous. They're straight. They're just. Look at verse 138. He says, your testimonies that you have commanded are righteous and very faithful. God's testimonies. Again, we see a picture of a strong, well-built house. If you're living under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty, you have nothing to fear. Because you're living in a house that's built on a, a firm foundation, and a house that's built straight and solid. There's no other place we could run and hide that can give us the kind of protection and strength that we need. Talk about going to psychologists and psychiatrists and everything else. They can't give you anything. Rehab programs can't do it. We need to hide underneath the shelter of the Almighty. He's the mighty God. And everything He does is right. And His testimonies are strong and pure. It's a strong and mighty house. Now look at, we see a, a kind of a going back and forth here. Man and God. Man and God. Man and God. Listen to what the psalmist says. My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Does it make you angry when somebody denigrates God? Does it make you, when, when this God that you know is true, there's, there's a... Uh, a, a, a website on YouTube, okay, and it's it's called uh, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, they have testimonies on. They have videos of people who have testified of how, what God has done in their life. Uh, there's a fellow on there who was like a drug kingpin. He was a, he sold crystal meth. He got busted, went to jail, got saved, and he's given this testimony. And it's really a great testimony. And when you look down below, there's comments. You know, comments. How many people here ever look at YouTube? You're going to admit that you look at YouTube, okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to admit to it. But there's comments there. And some of the people comment, they'll say, oh, Christianity is for losers. All you Christians are crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. It's a fake religion. And I'm thinking, well, 
if it's a fake religion, why does this guy have a testimony? Don't tell me it's a fake religion. I know where I was before I got saved, and I know where I am now. I didn't do that myself. I sure didn't do it because, you know, it pays good. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't do it because I wanted power. God does the work. God does the change. That's a testimony of what God does in your life. How many people in here have a testimony Amen. of what God has done? Where he's taken you from. Nobody else could do that. They can't deny. They could deny, try to deny God. But when they look at a, a believer that has come from point A to point B and God has brought them there, they can't deny that. They can only just shrug it off as just being nothing. Fairy tale. You did it yourself. The psalmist says, When I hear people when my enemies have forgotten your words, my zeal consumes me. When you hear people denigrate God, besmirch the name of Jesus Christ, it ought to make you angry. It ought, it ought, it ought, it ought to burn you up inside. So what are you talking about my God like that? What are you talking about the God that saved me and healed me and made me whole and gave me a right mind? What are you talking about that God like that? Now listen to what the psalmist says about the Lord. He says in verse 140, Your word is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. His word is incorruptible. It's without blemish. It's without fault. It's infallible. We need to fall in love with His word. We need to be addicted to His word. When we get stressed, when we get things happening, the first place we need to go is His word. I've said it before, and I, I mentioned part of our testimony is when, when Rose was diagnosed with cancer, I went to the internet. That was the wrong thing to do. I should have went to his word. When you get a bad report from the doctor, don't go to the internet. Go to his word. The internet just scared the heck out of you. <laughs> just, he says, your word is very pure. Your servant loves it. Now look at verse 141. This is the psalmist talking about himself. He says... I am small and despised. Do you ever feel like the whole world is against you? Especially because of your faith? Have you ever felt like the whole world was against you because of what you believe? Your family members? Sometimes even folks in church. Amen. Amen. I heard too many amens there. <laughs> sometimes, come on, sometimes even folks in church, will, when, if you stand for righteousness, there's some folks in church that might have got a little lukewarm or a little in a rut. And, and when you start getting, getting bold and in the name of Jesus, and it, they say, we don't do things like that around here. It says, I'm small and despised. Sometimes we feel like a nobody. Sometimes you get passed over. Get passed over. Anybody here ever been passed over? <laughs> Yet, I don't forget your precepts. Amen. We're small, we're scorned, but God's word is still sure. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. See, we can find comfort in that. When we're helpless, when we're hopeless, when we have absolutely nothing that we can do about our situation, we can go to the God that is over our situation. He says in verse 142, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. God's righteousness never changes. What He said a million years ago is the same today. Who he was before anything was created is the same today. He's the same God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's the same God. His, his personality hasn't changed. He hasn't gotten grumpy with old age like some of us. He hasn't gotten, you know, he hasn't changed his personality. He's always the same. When we read about him in Genesis or we read about him in Revelation, we can be sure that that's the God that we serve. Some folks think there's a different God in the New Testament and the Old Testament. It can't be. There's only one God. And He didn't change His mind. He didn't change the way He was. He didn't start out one way and say, oh, well, you know, that's not working, and go some other way. He's always been... He was God before the universe existed. 
It's an everlasting righteousness. His law is truth. What this word says, I don't care what the Supreme Court says or what some Congress says or what some state house says. His word is truth. Right is right and wrong is wrong according to his word. He's, he established that before anything else. And we try to change that. Mankind tries to change it. We can change the laws, change the Constitution, change... But it doesn't change what God says is right and what God says is wrong. You can call me bigoted. You can call me narrow-minded. You can call me draconian. There's a good word. They like to use that word. Yeah, you're draconian. That's all right. It's God's word. God's word supersedes everything that man does. If he says something's wrong, it's wrong. I'm not going to get into that. I don't have to. You all know what I'm talking about. People, come on, foolishness. <laughs> That's not my message this morning. I'm not going there. Look at verse 143. Now this, this, is, this is the verse. Verse 143 is the one that really grabbed me when I was reading through this. He says this. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me. Come on. Huh? Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me. Can anybody say that's happened to me? Maybe it's got a hold on you right now. Over something. See, now here's what happens. Stuff goes on. Things happen in our lives. Sometimes we cause it. Sometimes somebody else causes it. And we begin to think about it. You all know what I'm talking about? See? And we'll give Satan a peanut. And we'll start thinking about something. And we'll say, oh, what can happen to me if this happens? What's going to happen if that doctor report comes back? Bad. And we'll give him a peanut. And Satan will say, thanks. And he'll put some stuff in our mind. He'll say, ah, oh, you're going to die. Come on, anybody been there? You're going to lose that battle. You're going to, you're, you're going to lose. You ain't going to come through this. You're going to lose it. And then we give him another peanut. And we listen to what he says. And, 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 and we say, Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. I want to tell you something. When trouble and anguish take hold on you, maybe you've got a hold on you right now. Maybe you've got a, a, a pit in your stomach that's bigger than the Grand Canyon right now because you're thinking about what's coming up next week. You're thinking about what's coming up tomorrow, what's going to come up in a month. I want to tell you something. You need to bring that to the household of faith. You need to bring that to the house that's established by God. The straight and strong building underneath the shadow of His wings. When trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, He says, Your commandments are my delights. When you get overwhelmed with stuff that's going on, when you get poor, just you need to hide in the shadow of his wings. He says, the righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. I want, I want to tell you something this morning. I'm finding out that the older I get, and the longer I do this, it has not gotten easier. I have not, I figured after 20 years, we're going to be celebrating our 20 year anniversary here in, as a church in October. I figured after 20 years, I have this thing all figured out. <laughs> Everything would just be going smooth. Man, it'd just be, man, it'd be just rolling like a well oiled machine. Listen, the further I go, the more I learn, the more I need to be here. Because the further I go, I'm, I'm, I run into situations that I figured, I, I would think, I could, I could deal with that, and I find out, man, this is beyond me. And I'm learning, here's what I'm learning. The closer I get to God, the more I need to get in here. And the further I go, I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm, I'm getting wisdom. Here's the wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The wisdom I'm getting is, and I'm trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. I'm trying to go back here. Look at one more, one more psalm with me. And turn to, turn to the, uh, 
the 91st Psalm. Some of you know it by heart. I know Sister Kathy knows Kathy, she knows this, this psalm by heart. See, we need to learn to be addicted to the presence of God. We need to learn to have a daily, and you know what? It's free and it's legal, and you can do it all you want. He that dwells, he that lives, not visits, not the pays, you know, of, uh, you know, stops by once a week. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. You need to find your secret place in Christ. Sister Dora sang a song here a couple weeks ago about the secret place. We need to find where our secret place is. And that's not necessarily a, a room or a place, a physical place. It could be. But it's your spiritual uh, relationship with God. You need to find the secret place. Your, your secret place isn't the same as mine. Don't try to climb into mine. He that dwells, that lives, that abides, that lives in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, live under the shadow. He got me covered. He's got my back covered. He's got my front and both sides covered. He's got me covered. If I'm dwelling, if I'm living, if I'm abiding in His presence. Why do we think this Christian thing is once a week? That's what's happened to churches. They think it's a once a week thing. They'll do the once a week thing on Sunday morning and they'll maybe get involved in something going on this here or that and we think it's our participation. That's just what we do. But we need to live in His presence 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. As I said the other day, it's not a, it's not a part time deal. It's a whole package. It's everything. It's everything. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. Have you said that of God? When, the whole, when your whole life has fallen apart, have you said, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God? It's hard sometimes. When you take a good look around you and you see what's going on and you say, Man, it seems like everything is falling apart. Can you say, He is my refuge? Say that with me. He is my refuge. That's a hiding place. And my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. I've got a fortress around me. When the Apostle Paul said in Philippians, he said, let, uh, be anxious for nothing, but let your request be made known with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. And the peace of God will keep your heart and mind. He was describing a, a, a wall, a fortress wall around you. He'll guard your heart and mind. Satan won't be able to come in and take a peanut once in a while and go in and, and give you all kinds of chaos. If you pray to him and give him thanks and put your affection and your thoughts upon him, Satan can have no rule over you. It's a choice that we make. We can either hand him the keys to everything that's going on in here. Torment me. I've done it. Or we can crawl in the presence of the Most High. Look at this verse 3. We're, we're going to close. It's a short message this morning. Surely he shall, what? Deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. The Apostle Paul in his very last letter to Timothy wrote this. He said, the Lord delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. Now Paul said that knowing that in just a few days or a few weeks he was going to be executed by Nero. That was his last letter. He knew his time had come. But he didn't care. Because he had fought the fight. He had run a race. And all through, when you read about Paul's life in the book of Acts, man, he went through some stuff. But God brought him out of them all. He said, he delivered me from the mouth of a lion. Has anybody here ever been delivered from the mouth of a lion? Maybe you feel like you're in a lion's mouth right now. God will deliver you. He'll deliver you. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. God's word. The shield of faith. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The weapons that we have, defensive and offensive weapons, is God's word. What else do we have? You shall not be afraid. God help us. When fear grips you, when you get the bad report, when you, when you hear about, when, when, you, when you get the, the phone call about your kid in trouble, when you, whatever it might be, don't be afraid. Because you have a God who's stronger than anything or anybody. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. We're so, there's so much going on. If you watch the news, man, it'll make you go crazy. If you pay attention to it. No Fox News. They talk about, you know, economy, deficit. It's bad. But it ain't going to scare me. I ain't going to get scared. I'm not going to get scared. What are they going to do? What, what can happen? If I have a God that's over all things, what, what can happen? I'm not going to get scared. I'm, I'm not, you, you know what? When I, I, what first brought me to the Lord, I was watching the news. <laughs> I was saying, this place is sure going crazy. That's what I said. I was watching the news. It drove me to the Lord. I said, man, this place is nuts. I ran to the shadow of the Most High. Thank God he, he received me. Thank God he called me. Thank God he, he, he attracted me. He says, you don't have to be afraid of everything that's going on because I'm over it. I'm above it. Listen to this, verse 7. Just reading a little bit more. Just kind of rambling a little bit this morning. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come near you wow abiding in the presence of the most high only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward <laughs> of the wicked well <laughs> hallelujah because you have made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high your habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Sister Carol sang a song about an angel. You know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not into angelology, but we got them. There's bad ones and there's good ones. And I believe there's good ones assigned to you and me. If you're a child of God, I believe He has assigned angels to you. I believe He has assigned angels to, to congregations and churches who preach His Word. I believe, I believe that God has His message. If he had, them in, if he had them here, why doesn't He have them now? He has them now. He'll give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They'll bear you up in their hands, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. We have angels that are willing to hold us up if we're willing to give them rain. If we're willing to, to yield to the power of the Holy Spirit, God will keep our, He'll keep our feeble knees. He'll keep us lifted up. He'll keep us strong. He'll keep us seeking His face. If we get addicted to His Word and live in His presence, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're struggling with, God will bring you through. He'll bring you through. I was going to read the whole thing, but we might as well. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Listen. Jesus told his disciples, told him to go into all the world, preach the gospel. And he said, 
All authority is given unto me. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. You might be going through a trial like you've never had before in your life. Jesus is with you. Sister Hazel, Jesus is with you. You know that. I know she knows that. Jesus is with you too. Whatever you're going through, Jesus is with you. You, if you give a nugget to Satan, he'll torment you. He'll make you lose sleep. But my Bible says, if your mind is stayed on him, your, your sleep will be sweet. He's over you. His wings are over you. He has sent His messengers to bless you and guide you and keep you and protect you. I've been protected by angels. Boo, I can look back in my life and see and look upon things and say, God, your hand must have been upon me. You must, you must have had some kind of angel stopping where I was going or changing my path or doing something because of things that have happened. God is concerned about His, uh, His children. He cares about you. He is covering you. He's over you. Abide in His presence this morning. And don't fear. And don't be afraid. Because God is able to deliver you. I trust in my Lord for all things. And when, when the enemy shouts, do you ever have the enemy yell at you? you ever have the devil, devil screaming at you? You don't have to be afraid. We have a God that's big. You don't even have to answer him. We have a God that's bigger. Get addicted. Listen, get addicted to this. Let this be your let this be your dwelling place. God's word. And he'll keep you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I believe you just wanted to encourage us this morning. I believe everybody in here got something going on because that's just what life is. Some got really Big things going on, and maybe some things aren't so big, but that's just life. Father, we're, we have a tendency to when we get stressed, or when we get afraid, to try to calm ourselves through substance, through things, through things that cause us to feel better. But those things are just temporary and they really don't deal with the problem. Father, you've given us a prescription in your word. Lord, that when trouble comes, when trouble and anguish grab a hold of us, Father, let every one of us make a determination in our heart that when we're, when we're grabbed by trouble and anguish, we will flee to your word. We won't go to those things that we've always done went to to try to make us feel better. But we'll go to your word and see what your word has to say. And put our faith and trust in what your word says. And we'll crawl under the presence of your wings, under the shadow of your wings. And we'll, we'll put our faith in, 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 in the house of the Almighty. Because your judgments are true. They're righteous. And they've been righteous for all of eternity. Father, I want to pray for those this morning that are going through, that are going through a horrible, a horrible challenge in their lives. You all know who you are. You know who you are. If I, if I call up, I'd probably everybody would come up here. We all got something we're going through. But I want to pray this morning, Father, for each and every one in this place. The trials and the tribulations of this life that go beyond our understanding, Father. We just don't know why they're happening. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my family? Why, have, why has this... Father, we know that your judgments are true. Your righteousness is, has been righteous from all of eternity. Father, we don't have an answer to the whys, but we know the who we can turn to and crawl into your presence and crawl up on your lap and have you hug us and say, look, you're my son, you're my daughter. We, uh, you've given us a spirit of adoption whereby we could cry, Abba, Father. So this morning we cry, Abba. Yes. Breathe upon us, O oh God. And the things we're dealing with. Won't you stand with me, saints? And the things we're dealing with. And the things we're dealing with. 
trouble and the turmoil that we're dealing with. Father, Abba, Mide, could you come and play something softly? Just play a little softly. And what we're dealing with, whatever it is you're dealing with, take somebody's hand next to you. And they don't even have to know. I want you to pray one for another. So I could call everybody up here to pray this morning, but I want you to pray one for another. And I want to say this, you know, we're going to close, we're going to pray, we're going to close. And if you want to come up and pray for something special, don't leave until you come up and I'll, I'll be happy to pray with you. But I owe my wife is here and we'll pray, we'll pray with you. Don't, don't leave without getting prayer. But Father, we want to dwell in the presence of the Almighty. We want to dwell in the presence of the Almighty. Let her dwell in the presence of of the Almighty. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, the enemy is shouting and screaming. Doubt and fear and anguish. Father, anguish has gripped her. But oh God, we come into the presence of the Almighty God. We dwell in your presence and let your wings overshadow us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray one for another. And the things that we're wrestling with right now. The anguish and the trouble that has gripped us. Oh God, we give to you this morning. Father, we don't know what the answer is going to be. We don't know what we can do. Father, we try. We go from this place to the next place to the next place looking for an answer. Looking for a, a solution. But Father, we can't find it. Lord, let us crawl into your presence. And dwell in the presence of the Almighty. Father, we'll not be afraid. God, it doesn't matter what any oh, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Listen, somebody needs somebody needs to crawl into that presence this morning. I'm, I'm, it's almost like you're thinking, oh somebody's gonna think I'm listen, don't worry about what anybody thinks. They're not they're not they're not in your secret place. They can't, they can't give you help. We can't we can't give each other what we need. We need to get it from the, our source. Don't be afraid to climb in. Don't be afraid to climb up on, on, on Abba's lap and cry out, Oh God! In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray you would minister your peace to each and every person in this place. Today. As we're going through troublous time, troubling times, perilous times. Father, your name is being uh, dragged through the mud. The name of Jesus is being besmirched. Father, then in, in, in everywhere around us, they're, they're ignoring your laws and your precepts and your righteousness. They're ignoring it. They're trying to create their own righteousness. God, help us stand firm on your word and not compromise and not give an inch to the enemy, but to stand firm in your presence. God, I pray for those this morning who's, they're so they, they got a hole in the pit of their stomach because of things that are going on. Father, I pray you would give the peace of God that passes understanding. In the name of Jesus. As we go from this place, but not your presence, Lord. God, we want to go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh. How great is our God. Let's sing that chorus.